and so guys welcome back uh this is andrea tv kenya and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like our videos so proceeding on uh, with our interview today mike has just explained to us more about the bees and now we want to know how he got his first colony how is how is the process of getting what's the process of getting a first colony after establishing a hive okay thank you so much mm -hmm. uh usually um this is what i would say how i got my first colony mm -hmm. or rather how how i got my first box colonized um i remember um i had so many challenges when i was starting off mm -hmm. um the first time i made so many mistakes like um i took my boxes and i placed them in the in the, in the apiary just the same way i was taught mm -hmm. check the boxes once you uh, set them up in the apiary bees will come it took about three months mm -hmm. nothing was happening so i went back into the books i went back to youtube checked out nikangalia nikasoma more and uh, i realized that i'm supposed to be uh, my boxes are supposed to be on higher ground mm -hmm. so that uh, bees can be attracted in the boxes so i i i uh, i went to my apiary nikachukua the brood box the brood box is the well uh, when i started off i started with uh, with with, with a type of a box called Langstroth mm -hmm. hive. I'll explain that later. So, I, I in the Langstroth, uh, are, it's usually separated uh, into two boxes. We have a brood box, and then we have another section called the super box. The brood box is where the colony lives in. Mm -hmm. So I took that brood box because I didn't have a box called a catcher box. Usually a catcher box is a smaller box. I'll also explain that further later on uh, how it works. Mm. So I took my brood box and uh, I set it up on higher ground mm. to see if I could catch a swarm. Uh, still, it didn't work for me well. So I decided to go out, um, check, look for bees colonies. Those are wild bee colonies, mm. the ones that live on trees. Even underground or even underground to see if I could catch a swab. So I found a neighbor who um, had a big mango tree and on the mango tree there was a wild colony of bees living there. So I set up my boxes there and uh, luckily enough they were colonized. Uh, that's what I did. So after they were colonized I brought my boxes from that place mm -hmm. after about a month. Then I brought them back to my apiary so that they can stay where I designated for them to live. Mm -hmm. Yes. So after that, that's where, that's where they've been. That's where they continue residing. And then after that, I started doing... Um, management for them so yes. like what do you put in the new in the in the boxes that attracts the the bees usually um the the the, the boxes are smeared with uh, beeswax mm -hmm. beeswax is um uh, it's a byproduct that bees usually make mm -hmm. and uh, they make this wax for the purposes of sealing honey and also building uh uh, comb cells. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, when you look at a frame, utapata ikona combs built on one side and on the other side. Mm -hmm. These 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 uh, combs, when you refine them, they turn into being wax. There is a procedure of refining that. Mm -hmm. After you've harvested honey, you don't throw away the combs. At Yosasanitakataka, you refine them. If you refine them, then Zinatan Zinakwa wax. I'll show you a sample later on. Um, that is what I usually take when I make a new box. Before I 
um, I give it, to, I, I, I set it up or I sell it to someone else, another farmer, mm. I, I must smear it with wax so that when he's going to set up to catch a colony, mm -hmm. then the boxes are already smeared with wax that will work as swarm lures because bees will be attracted to their own property, their own uh, product, mm. something that they make. And like if you take sukaringuru or you take sugar or you take any other thing that pe people may want to use, they're only attracted to honey. Mm -hmm. You can use honey to trap bees or you can use wax to trap bees or they, there are other uh, modifications out here, but it has to be a product that bees love mm -hmm. for it to attract a, col uh, a swarm mm -hmm. into a box. So once a swarm has entered into a box, that's when you say that this box has been colonized. That's the term uh, we use in beekeeping. Bees that are in a box are called a colony, living in a box. That's when you say, my box has been colonized. I have this number of boxes colonized. And the one that doesn't have bees, you say, I have this number of empty boxes. Yes. And so after the colonization, how long does it take you to harvest the first honey? Usually, I would say this. After colonization, after a box has been colonized, mm -hmm. it will take um, uh, bees about four to five months to build their own colonies inside there, meaning the, to build the frames that are inside the box inside the, the brood box. They would take, basically they take about a month to just build them. Then we have, the queen will take another um, a month or so laying eggs in, in inside them because, well, the queen lays eggs, at least a thousand eggs every day. That is one thing she does every day. So she will lay eggs in all these frames a Langstroth box contains 10 frames in the brood box and 10 frames in the super box. So within four to five months, they'll develop on their own. After that, it will take you another two months or so for the worker bees to build honey in the super. Within the two months, uh, depending on the vegetation around, if there's enough vegetation for them, that is enough food, pollen and nectar, water within a hundred meter radius from where they live then they'll build the colonies faster mm. if there's no enough food within where they live they'll take longer to complete uh, the, 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 the building the colonies and making honey but on a good range it takes about six to seven months yes mm. Mm. then now the subsequent ones now subsequent harvests Will, ha will always happen after three, between two months to four months maximum, mm -hmm. yes. So how was your first harvest? It wasn't good. <laughs> that one I would tell anybody. Mm -hmm. It wasn't good. Uh, my expectation, what I got wasn't within my expectation. Mm -hmm. uh, in class I was told that the first harvest will be about 10 kilos to 14 kilos. But my first harvest, to be sincere, mm -hmm. was just about two and a half kilograms. So did you realize the mistakes you made or what happened? I know that wasn't a mistake. That was a lesson. Mm -hmm. A very good lesson. Mm -hmm. How? Number one, what I learned along the way is this. If you're out there and you're, getting, and you, you're interested in beekeeping, don't get into beekeeping with the idea that you're coming to be keeping to make millions overnight. It's not a get rich quick type of farming. Just the same way you do maize farming, mm -hmm. you do coffee farming, you do sugarcane plantation, you do any other type of farming. It's just the same way you do this one. Mm -hmm. Do your thing, work hard, then returns zita kujato. Mm -hmm. You'll see the you, you'll see everything just working out visually. Like in you can come into beekeeping with the idea of I want to do this Araka Sana electron class, it has to work like this, like this, like this. You'll fail. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. In fact, utanguka and you'll be disappointed and you won't like it. So after I got two and a half kilograms, I asked myself, why is it that my boxes are not giving me what I want? How many boxes were there? When I started off, there were only two. Mm -hmm. Why is it that I'm not getting the 10 kilograms that I was told? Why did I get two and a half? So I went back to the drawing board. I consulted the person who, um, um, who trained me into beekeeping. I consulted her and she told me, Mike, what you need to do is you need to start planting flowers. You need to increase vegetation for the bees. You need to subsidize food for them. Yes, bees look for their own food. Mm -hmm. But if you want more honey, if you want more, you must subsidize for them. You must also feed them. Mm -hmm. Then they'll give you extra. They'll give you more. So when I started doing that, my production increased. The subsequent harvest I got after my first harvest was six and a half kilograms in one box. Mm -hmm. So the two boxes gave me 14 kgs. Wow. Then after that, the third harvest, I got 28 kilograms from two boxes. Wow. Then I started, in, I added more boxes. I added three more. Then I, so I had five mm -hmm. boxes. Then um, so I did the same. And uh, the largest amount of honey I have ever harvested in all my boxes was 68 kgs. From how many? Uh, just from about 10. Mm. That was the largest. But I know um, that the more I'm improving, the more I'll get more. Yes. So do you harvest them all at once? Not really, mm -hmm. because boxes are colonized at different times. And how do you know that the honey is now ready? I have my harvest. records. Mm -hmm. So I know that if this box was, harvest, was colonized in, say, January, I know that by June or July, I'm supposed to be harvest, making my first harvest. If this one was colonized, uh, say, in March, I know that uh, by around September, October, November, mm -hmm. I'm expecting a harvest. Mm -hmm. Okay? So every box has a date of colonization. And after it's been harvested, I also note down that box number one, this one, I harvested on this date. Mm -hmm. So I expect that after four months or three months, I'm going to harvest again. Mm -hmm. So I approximate the date or rather the time. In between, after harvesting, there is something called post-management. Meaning that every time you harvest, after harvesting, you give your bees about a month to recover. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when they are recovering, after, after a month, they'll start building combs, honeycombs again. So you come back and check their progress. Mm -hmm. Have they started building honeycombs again? Yes. If no, why not? So that one just going to check literally. Yes, mm -hmm. that one you come, open up a high, uh, this, uh, the lid, when I make a candle, you check the super box, what's happening in there, you pick out frames, you check, are they building or not? If they are not, give them time. Come back after another one month, check what's happening again. Yes. So in in marketing, uh, is there a ready market for honey? Honey is one product that has demand. Its demand is too much. Mm -hmm. In fact, out here, you'll find that the supply of honey doesn't... I mean, we are still having um, Badutu Kochini in supplying honey. Okay? Yeah. We can't even meet demand out here. Personally, I can't even meet demand for my customers. Anytime I harvest honey, I can't stay with that honey for more than two weeks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even within a week in Aisha Yote. 
that alone just tells you that I can't meet the demand. So where do you sell your honey specifically? To organizations or individuals? Unajua, as a farmer, mm -hmm. I'm a hustler, upper inje, I don't choose my customers. Mm -hmm. Anybody is my customer. Even you, you can. Even you, you're my customer. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, I sell my honey to both individuals. Mm -hmm. I sell it to hotels. I sell it to... Um, I haven't sold to organizations yet. But currently, I sell to hotels and individuals. Yes. And hospitals sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And so, what are some of the... Apart from honey... What else can you get from the hive as at harvesting? Yes, uh, you now... You mentioned the wax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in, a, in, a, in a hive, when you are harvesting, mm -hmm. you, the, 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 the other products we have, um, we have honey itself, mm -hmm. then we have wax, we have propolis, we have uh, pollen cakes, mm -hmm. We have uh, pollen itself. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, bee venom. We have basically like seven products, mm -hmm. bi products. Yes. In all these, honey is basically the cheapest. Mm -hmm. When we look at market value, it's the most common product that you can get in a hive. Mm -hmm. It's the most common and it's the easiest to find. But it, but in terms of market value, mm -hmm. it has the least market value. It's very cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Out of those, which one is the most expensive? Uh, the most expensive is uh, bee venom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bee venom is the most expensive. What is it used for? What is the venom itself? The venom usually comes from the sting. Ile sting yenye wakati nyuki imekuuma. Mm -hmm. wakati imekudunga. You see there's that casting that remains. That wakati ume ukirab, unaona hapo hiyo section inafura. Yeah. Your rubbing is the venom. Hiyo okay, wakati nyuki imeku sting, there's a liquid that it releases to your body. That liquid is the venom. Mm -hmm. And each and every single bee carries about uh, zero point zero three milligrams mm -hmm. of venom so when it stings you it only releases zero point zero one mm -hmm. milligrams mm -hmm. at that alone do you know so it can only sting once it can only sting once no, when it stings once mm -hmm. a section of its abdomen goes with the sting so it can't survive it dies Mm -hmm. Okay, because that abdomen, high, porna. It's not like a human being that has white cells, white blood cells that will will definitely heal a wound and then that places in a porna evil. So for every bee that sings, dies. it dies automatically. Mm -hmm. So um, when you when when you're doing beekeeping, you must first of all ask yourself what you why why do you want to keep bees. Do you want to keep them for pollination purposes mm -hmm. or you want to keep them to harvest honey or you want to keep them for propolis harvesting or you want to keep them for wax or for royal jelly or for uh, pollen or for uh, venom collection. Mm -hmm. There are certain byproducts that if you decide to keep bees for, you don't get the others. There are some that you just get all. Sometimes you get all, sometimes you get all. What do I mean? When you decide to keep bees for bee venom collection, forget about the honey part. You won't get honey. Mm -hmm. Bees will make honey for themselves. They'll, get, they'll make honey that they can eat in the brood. Mm -hmm. In the super hakuta kwada honey. Why? Because when you're collecting venom, there's a machine that is usually placed at the entrance of the hive the work of this machine is to irritate the bees mm -hmm. so if they irritated they sting that machine mm -hmm. thinking that that is an intruder so when they sting 
the machine has a section that collects the venom those stings hmm. okay so zinauma ile ile sting inaenda chini kwa container zinauma inaenda kwa container so you see the ones that um, sting definitely they die, they'll die yeah. okay hmm. so they'll sting after eating the honey inside no they just sting you know it's like when you go stand near a, 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 a what when you go to the apiary there and just stand hmm. and stand there hmm. they'll sting you no they, they won't sting you after eating the honey they'll just sting you because you you are an intruder hakuna kitu unafanya hapo so they'll sting you so that you get out of that place so that you know that you 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 are you're standing at the right place at the wrong time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> or rather you're standing at the wrong place at, at the, the wrong right time. time or uh, 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 standing at the wrong place at the right time mm. they, they'll, they'll they'll chase you out of that place mm. okay So when you harvest like I was saying when you're going into venom collection you'll forget about the honey you can't harvest honey at the same time harvest uh, venom it would it would be practically impossible you won't even get honey what is the venom used for the venom usually it's it's used for making antiviruses it's used for making medicines different types of medicines mm-hmm. and therapy drugs mostly mm-hmm. That's that that's what the venom is used for. And it's very expensive because it's sold per gram. Its price per gram ranges from between 5k to 8000. Per gram. Fact, even to 10000 per gram. Mm-hmm. It's more expensive than a gram of gold if you're asking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And you mentioned uh, the royal jelly. Mm-hmm. Royal jelly basically it's 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 food for the queen it's not it's not usually found in large quantities mm-hmm. in a patikana kidogo you can find the most about this just size of your little finger mm-hmm. in a entire box and if you're going to harvest it you just take a bit of it just kidogo sana because usually that's what the queen feeds on so kichukua yote mm-hmm expect something called a colony collapse meaning that the, the colony will just the bees will depart from your your nini your hive because you you've interfered with the queen mm-hmm. so you can just harvest kidogo kidogo from your box until you get to a kilo a kilo of royal jelly sells at about market rate 35 to 60000 per kilo mm-hmm. that is the second most expensive product So it is it used for medical purposes? Yes, for making anti-aging drugs specifically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What else did you mention? I also mentioned propolis. Mm-hmm. Propolis ni ile gum hiyo yenye inafanya bees zinashika nayo frames. Mm-hmm. When uh, the frames are attached together you cannot release you cannot basically lift up of the Sorry. How is it to a frame kutoka kwa box until you you cut a cut them you release them from one another they are usually attached and when they are attached zinashikana na nene zinashikana zinashikana na your propolis propolis ni yoga menye nyuki natengeneza basically for sticking together sticking in uh, with the frames together what is the work of a propolis when you harvest it one propolis is used for making shoe gum ile gum ya ya kushona viatu mostly mm-hmm. propolis is used for making uh, chewing gum factories ile natengeneza the likes of kina big g and all that it's also used for making uh, drugs mm-hmm. like capsules that outer cover yeah. it's basically made out of propolis okay mm-hmm. it's also um, um a type of type of me- medicine on its own it's an uh, antioxidant uh drug it's used for wounds it's used for other so many other things it has so many other functions that i haven't really gotten deep into to know but i know the basics yes mm-hmm. and then we also have uh, pollen cake pollen cake is it's it's usually found also in the box but it's not in the super pollen cake is found in the brood mm-hmm. 
it co it has it's brownish in color and it has yellow uh, uh, p uh parts inside it pollen cake sorry pollen cake usually it's medicine on its own it's an antibiotic um at the same time it's used for healing um uh bee sting uh, there's a there's a term uh, that is uh, that is used to define that i'm forgetting the term a, a little bit but um it's also medicine and uh you can also use it to feed back the bees they love it kabisa and especially when you also have pollen itself pollen is ye usually yellowish in color it's 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 uh, pollen from flowers okay um you can harvest it you can sell it though sazingine it's tricky selling pollen because of the standards that should be met when packaging it there are so many high standards that are required mm -hmm. like uh sometimes for a small scale holder it would be difficult to know how to pack it because it's supposed to be under uh, four degrees Celsius. Sometimes you don't even have the machines. It means you must have a fridge, refrigerator, mm. to keep pollen uh, in its form w before you sell it. Mm -hmm. So, if you're going to sell it, then there are standards that you may meet or you may not meet. A gram of pollen goes for 6,000. Mm -hmm. A kilo... <laughs> You can do that times a thousand. So, if you're not going to sell pollen, mm -hmm. then you can harvest it and dry it. Then you mill it and feed it back to the bees. Mm -hmm. Now, in small quantities, by making something called a pollen substrate or a pollen cake for that matter mm -hmm. and then you feed it back to your bees they'll eat it and they'll increase the production of honey definitely mm -hmm. and so what are some of the challenges that you face as a beekeeper wow well challenges are always there number one as a beekeeper uh, there's a problem of uh, human traffic Human traffic, these are people who just walk or read sometimes children playing near apiaries and throwing stones at the bees. You know, when you okay, this umboa, they'll definitely um, create a havoc. Yeah. They may sting anybody passing by. Number two, we have pests. Mm -hmm. Pests, we have uh, also some other insects as much as bees are aggressive they're also insects that they fear some of these insects are like um, the red ants that is uh, siafu then we have uh, insects like uh, wax moth wax moth nile butterfly the ugly butterfly yeah. uh, isos in, they, 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 they really really they, I mean they can they can cause havoc in your apiary if you don't do management mm -hmm. as 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 soon as possible if you don't do frequent management they can you might think that your boxes are colonized but hakuna mm -hmm. ata because wax smoke ikiingia ndani ya box what it does is that it consumes all the wax and when it's eating the wax mm -hmm. you know the bees if they can't defend their colony then the wax moth will take over and the bees will leave. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you'll have a colony collapse. Mm -hmm. So how, how are you going to, to so deal with the challenges? <clears throat> some of these challenges, uh, like for example, uh, when when you have challenges like say wax moth kwa box yako and then and you realize you know when you're doing management you'll realize earlier kabisa that wax moth imeingia ikiingia 
usually it will lay its eggs inside the colony inside the inside the 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 the, 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 the cells the cells okay hmm. but you'll realize because it forms a comb comb kama ile ya nini ile ya spider comb spider web mm-hmm. inatengeneza kushika all the nini the bees and the and the and the, and the the younger ones together so that ipate vile nakula hani ipate venye lava yake pia inakula ile 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 wax. nini ile wax mm. so when you realize you come and cut off those combs those ones when you cut them off completely and you don't throw away those combs within that apiary because it arudi tu hapo you cut them off completely you go and burn them you don't even feed it to your chicken you just burn it far away from the apiary okay mm-hmm. iso frames unachukua unaiziosha vizuri and then you just dry them and you take them back that is one of the ways for the siafu beet those ones uh, you have to look for a way either you use salt or you use uh, you, you know when you when you're using pesticides mm-hmm. you remember by the end of the day that bees are also insects yeah. so if you're going to use pesti- pesticides to control pests mm-hmm. it would be advisable to use organic pesticides so that you don't kill your bees they can kill these other insects but not the bees mm. if you if you don't have that sometimes we, let's say your 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 colony has been no your apiary has been invaded by siafu how do you want to control this yeah. you don't have the pesticide at hand use what you have salt is a weapon on its own kitchen mm-hmm. salt mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a weapon in its own mm-hmm. just take salt and sprinkle 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 everywhere siafu zitatoroka in 5 minutes you won't even see them there so even these ones that invade us in the houses even the ones that invade you in the houses See. if you don't have something you don't have mafutata mm-hmm. in fact mafutata don't even take mafutata to an apiary mm-hmm. unless you want to be stung to death don't bees and mafutata they are not friends <laughs> i see at times we use to burn this to burn these tires can that help mothers when you're keeping bees bees don't like smoke mm-hmm. bees don't like mafutata and if you're going to use pesticide like i said you use uh bee friendly pesticides those are organic pesticides mm-hmm. that will not interfere with the bees because you see if you kill the bees jua too there's no honey if you're going to use chemicals jua you're going to contaminate your product which is honey mm-hmm. okay we don't want uh dirty and contaminated honey because we don't want to die or be sick because of the things that we can control mm-hmm. we just want to have clean honey clean organic honey that can be sold to anybody that can be consumed by anybody without any problem okay so i'm just saying that sometimes at home most of the people out here i'm either starting beekeeping or they're already in beekeeping some of the people may not be able to afford pesticides or something that can control ama mafutata today electricity is almost everywhere yeah. <laughs> ama solar iko karibu kila in all these homes so mafutata is not something that utapata tu pale kwa nyumba mm. yeah yeah you use what you have now where is pika without salt you yeah. can eat you can drink tea without sugar but you can't eat skuma wiki without salt that's true right yeah. use what you have and so uh, basically maybe there's somebody who wants to begin uh, uh, beekeeping what advice would you tell such a person okay this would be my quick advice mm-hmm. number one, if you want to start beekeeping before you start mm-hmm. read extensively study uh, do more research mm-hmm learn about the bees mm-hmm. at least know what a colony consists of mm-hmm. okay once you've known that uh, plan yourself financially okay and economically 